<laughs> okay, hi, this is Noah Mintz from uh, Locker Channel Mastering. We're here at Imsta Festa 2018 at Ryerson, which is a festival of uh, software, anti-piracy, and uh, basically new audio technology. And I just did a workshop about um, mastering, mostly mastering in the box, which I do. Uh, I also do mastering analog, but um, I'm more and more going in the box. We use uh, software such as UAD and SoftTube, which are being displayed here, which is so happen to be the software I mostly use. Yeah, this is at the HHB um, booth. What do we have here? We got Dave Dysart over there. We got Ian. I don't really know anyone else, but uh, say, say. Anyway, uh, um, HHB is a lot of the stuff I use is from them, especially the UAD stuff, which is pretty amazing. Um, yeah, you want to say something? I was just going to say, during your presentation, you were talking about uh, one of the bits of advice that I saw you giving was uh, talking about how to deal with mixes that are too loud. Right, mixes and, that are too loud. And the reality as a mastering engineer that you have yeah. to get mixes that are not so, ideal for you. Well, back in the day, like over a decade ago, when I used to get loud mixes, I, I, I just would send the mix back to the engineer and go, hey, this is too loud, can you turn it down? Um, then eventually you start losing jobs and you realize you gotta deal with loud mixes, it's just the way it is. People mix their albums quiet, they mix their albums loud, they mix their albums all different things. Your job is to work with them no matter what it is. If they're mixing too loud because they don't know any better, then it's kind of your job to tell them, hey, this could sound better if it has some dynamics. Because um, dynamics are great, they really are. And let the master engineer can make them loud. I believe the master engineer can make them loud better than the mixing guy can. Um, if you're not going to mastering, then it doesn't matter. But, um, but if you're giving loud mixes and, that's, and you're mastering and that's what you gotta deal with, then the first thing you do is turn them down. Uh, normally you have to work in the box if they're loud mixes. Um, usually super loud mixes, we're talking like, you know, ones that are loud, loud as they would be mastered on Spotify or radio. Um, you can't run them through analog when they're that loud. They just don't sound any good. Even if you bring them down in volume, you're still getting too much distortion in analog. So you work in the box. First thing I do is I turn it down and I apply EQ and compression, then I turn it back up, then now I turned it down. That gives me some this virtual bandwidth to work with, um, or virtual headroom, sorry. Um, it's not real headroom because, because between your, say, minus six and zero, there's actually nothing there. So that's, that's headroom, but it's really not anything to do with dynamic range. You're just basically reducing your master fader down by six. Um, real headroom is br real dynamic range combined with headroom is bringing your faders down and having nice peaks and valleys that sometimes go to my zero, sometimes stay minus eight, or sit around minus six level. And that I think is great if you have a nice dynamic range. Um, but if you have no headroom, you just bring it down, do your EQ and compression, bring it back up, and you should get a pretty clean master out of it while still maintaining. Uh, the loudness that you had in the original mix. Final thing, for the uh, young self-produced artists, young engineers, um, maybe sending their stuff to a mastering engineer for the first time, essentially what are you looking for in the package? Do you want stems? Do you want the final bounce? Yeah. Um, well, assuming you're a young engineer setting to mastering for the first time and not using Lander, then uh, uh, stems are great because then I can work on them a little bit extra than I would, but I'm not a mixing guy. Most mastering guys should not be mixing guys. So um, I would work on them um, in a way that I can just help shape. If you're sending me the stems, I can help shape it a little bit. I'm not a mixing guy, so I don't try to change the mix, but I just sort of shape it a little bit. If your bass is too much, I can sort of cut just the bass a little bit. You can bring your kick up and your drum stem. Um, but essentially, if you're confident with your mix, then send me a stereo wave file, and uh, uh, and I just work with that. And I'm, I'm look after mastering, it's got to sound better. If it doesn't sound better, then I'm not doing my job, or there's something wrong with the mix, um, or whoever's you're sending it to is not doing a good job. It just it just should sound better. As simple as that, um, or it should sound the same. Um, let me clarify that. Sometimes a mastering engineer does the best work when they're doing nothing. But it takes a long time. For me to do nothing takes me literally doing everything I have at my disposal to figure out nothing sounds the best. And maybe it's just a little game. Um, but if I literally give an album back to you 
that I did nothing to. It probably takes me twice as long to do that than if I gave you with something on it. So you're paying me to actually do something and that something is nothing, but it takes me a long time to get to that nothing. Very rare, but it's happened before. That was final, but you brought it up when it comes to Lander and other uh, online based, AI based mastering applications, so called instant mastering uh, applications or services. Um, is there a you, from your perspective as a professional master engineer, is there a legitimate use or place in the industry for these things? Okay, so the automated mastering is in uh, all different forms now. You've got something like Lander, um, which is um, uh, automated software. You have um, something like Aria, which is a robotic arm that's mastering an on analog gear. And you have something like uh, BX Digital Master Bay, which is um, a semi-automated software that you tweak yourself. Um, uh, Lander is not AI. Uh, I mean, they say it's AI. You could argue with me. I don't know for sure. I used it multiple times. It's not AI. It's automation. And it's poor automation at that. Um, AI needs a control. It needs. It needs. It needs something like if you're if AI is constantly machine learning and getting better. What is the control? Who's mastering it to say, oh, this is the gold standard, and then we're going to try to get to that by by automation? Well, every master is different. Every mix is different. So you can't really do AI. It's not. It's not AI. There's no. It's automation. I could do automation. I could set up automation for your master. Just not going to sound very good. I mean, the human element is deciding that. Also, AI can never decide to do nothing. It really doesn't, or automation. Um, so the real thing about mastering is that je ne sais quoi, which is like, I just make a little tweak and it makes all the difference in the world on a 1% level. And that 1% makes it just a tiny little bit enjoy more enjoyable. And it's like, mastering is about the subtleties. Um, something like Aria or that, that, that whatever it's doing, you're still running through analog gear, but you're still relying on a machine to do it. It's, it's still not, it's still, you're still missing the element that makes for how we connect mostly with music. Master Bay on BX Digital, I think it's called Master Bay, but whatever it is, it's the UAD software for mastering. It's the next level because it just simplifies everything and you then tweak it. You then turn those knobs till it's where you want it to be, which is essentially what mastering is anyway. And it just makes it a lot simpler. So I actually kind of, kind of like that stuff better. I mean, if you're a, Audio engine, I'm gonna be straight up here. If you're an audio engineer and you're using Lander, you're lazy AF, right? It's like, can you swear on Facebook Live? I don't know. You're lazy, okay? If you're using Master Bay, or I think it's called Master Bay, I have to look up what it's called. The BX Digi Di Digital. They have a, a plug-in alliance and a UAD version of it. If you're using that, you're doing the work. It's just helping you. So you're not being lazy, you're actually making it sound the way you want. You're, if you're using Lander, you're, you're relying on the software that you're uploading to to, to do it for you. Like it's, just, it's lazy. It's like, it's like, do it yourself. You could just use a limiter and it would sound probably better than Lander if you ask me. It's like nobody needs automation to that level. So does it provide a benefit? Check your mixes, what it might like sound as a master? No, because you're checking your mixes and you're making decisions based on false knowledge. So put it through Master Bay or put it through the BX Digital or put it through... Um, Put it through a, just a limiter. Then you'll have an idea of what it might sound master. But automation is not is no, has no place in audio engineering, if you ask me, unless it's faders, VCA, or you're doing audit, you're coding in the automation. And it's just copying what you did. But actual like artificial intelligent automation has no place in audio engineering, if you ask me. And I don't think I'm being old schooly. I think I'm just saying like that. We got enough automation in life. Audio engineering music creation should be by hand. Thanks a lot, Noah. Yeah!